Hi, a film that I was very excited to watch this week was Robert Eggers' The Lighthouse. Um, it's his second film as feature director after The Witch, which I saw on video, I say video, DVD, uh, a couple of years ago, and I, I don't think really captured by. Uh, it was uh, very highly acclaimed uh, as a period horror, very high on period detail and mood, but I didn't, it, just, it didn't really grab me. Uh, the Lighthouse tripled down <laughs> on the bits that people liked about The Witch because it's very, very intense on period detail to the extent that it looks like a film that was made a hundred years ago. It's about two lighthouse keepers, played by Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson, who arrive at this lighthouse on an isolated island in somewhere off the uh, northwest coast of the United States in the 1890s, and they're there for a four-week shift. One of them is a veteran, one of them is uh, a newcomer, and the veteran is very possessive about tending the light. He is the only one who is allowed into the uh, top of the uh, the tower to maintain the light. Uh, the, the young one has to do all the menial work and shovel coal, clean the, uh, the cottage that they live in. And it's a tough existence. And as time passes, the situation between them starts to thaw somewhat. They start to be a little more relaxed and open with each other. But at the same time as that, the night before they're due to be relieved, a colossal storm hits and situations go from bad to worse. And we start to question the sanity of either or both men, wonder what exactly we're watching, whether or not it takes place in either or both of their imaginations, and just what the hell is going on in the lamp room. Um, it's filmed in black and white in a very narrow screen shape. It's 1.17 to 1. Now, old televisions were about 1.13, sorry, 1.3 to 1, so it was 4 by 3. This is even narrower, almost square. So it has a very enclosed, cramped feel to it. But it also, because of the filming on black and white film, not just filming digitally and then treating it, but actual black and white film, and with lenses produced in the 1930s, it looks like it was unearthed from a vault. There are scenes near the start of ships moving through fog that look exactly like something from a silent film, even though it's actually new material, and in fact, more than likely a digital effect. Um, the mood is overwhelming. It's, you, you feel like you're there, you're on this island. The performances by Defoe and Patterson are superb, and the dialogue is fantastically rich and clearly studied in, in great detail. You know, diaries of longshoremen and fishermen and lighthouse keepers there's a lot of Moby Dick in there in terms of the uh, the uh, verbosity of um, uh, Defoe's character. There's a, a scene <laughs> where the film frequently lurches into absurd comedy. Um, Defoe has been doing all the cooking, and Patterson makes some offhand comment about how he doesn't actually like the way he cooks lobster. And Defoe is so appalled that he calls down a curse from Poseidon to obliterate Pattinson's character completely, which is beautifully shot and horribly intimidating, but also laughable because this curse is a response of him saying that he doesn't like his cooking. The film goes into full-on insanity later in the film and ends with something that is either too horrible to contemplate or a nightmarish fever dream. Um, but the film has reflections of, uh, as I say, classic literature, but it goes further back to parallels with Greek mythology, to the stories of Proteus and Prometheus, and um, ideas of, are these characters in some sort of limbo? Are they trapped in the afterlife? Are they dreaming of death? Are they imagining this whole situation as they're on the brink of death somewhere else? There are numerous layers and readings that one can impose on the film, as well as the, the beauty of its technical construction. It's superbly acted. The photography was Oscar nominated, which is very unusual for a, ostensibly a horror picture. Um, and um, the, the screenplay is a brilliantly crafted work of wonder by Eggers and his brother, Max. Um, so I would recommend it very highly indeed. It's, it, it gets real weird real fast, but 
if um, if you can stomach this sort of deep strangeness, then uh, I would recommend it very highly, and it's probably my favourite genre picture of the year.